Hi everyone and welcome to Classic Gamer 74, episode 14, Rare and Valuable Atari 2600 Games, part 2. I am your host, Anthony Ventrello, and I am Humphrey the Wolf. In our previous episode, we discussed some of the most valuable video games in the world, including this little gem, Birthday Mania, which is thought to be worth between sixteen to $35,000. Well, let's continue on with the, that list and discuss some more rare and valuable Atari 2600 games. Let us be clear from the start, though, that we are not going to discuss any prototypes. These games, although getting a very limited release, some of them anyway, these are games that were commercially released. We will have an episode later on where we discuss rare and hard-to-find prototypes. Thank you, Humphrey. And with that in mind, let's begin with our first video game, Lockjaw, by Apollo Games. All right, the game itself was actually voluntarily recalled by Apollo Games as the result of a lawsuit. Apparently, the title of the game and the gameplay itself were too similar to the movie Jaws. So, as I said, the game was recalled and then a few little minor changes were made and it was re-released as Shark Attack. Because the game wasn't on the market for very long and Apollo Games generally got very little distribution for their products, the game is quite valuable. Recently, a copy of it was for sale on eBay for almost a thousand dollars. Alright, next on our list is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre by Wizard Games. You've got to be kidding me, they actually made a video game of that terrible movie. Well, you know the expression, back in the 80s, if it was big, it got made into a video game. Alright, in the game, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you are the antagonist, Leatherface, and you are trying to kill as many people as you can before your chainsaw runs out of gasoline. This game is very difficult to find because many retailers declined to carry it. Others kept the game behind the counter away from children. Wizard Video faced protests when they released the game as some social groups claimed that it promoted violence. It's very hard to find with the box and manual. I've actually seen the game go all the way from like $50 to about $100. Yes, and I've actually seen uh, one still in the box go for almost a thousand. Next up we have Halloween by the same game company that brought you Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Alright, so in the game Halloween you play the role of Jamie trying to save the children from the evil Michael Myers. As Wizard Video was liquidating their inventory and trying to minimize costs, many copies of Halloween were sold with no label. The word Halloween is simply written across the cartridge in black marker. You've got to be kidding. Nope, and I actually have seen people that own this game that have those types of copies. I mean, personally, I thought, you know, they got them at a garage sale and, you know, the label got torn off and they somebody just put it on there. But they was like, no, 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 that's how I bought it. The label version is more sought after by collectors, but it is unclear which version is more rare. I've actually seen this game go for, oh lord, I mean, I've seen it on eBay for up to a thousand dollars, you know, not even in the package. Oh, that's hard to believe. Oh, I'm serious. I mean, it's definitely a much rarer game than Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's actually, I would say, a lot more fun, because, I mean, you're trying to save the children. I mean, you're not actually playing Michael Myers, so it's kind of a fun game, actually. Next up, we have Gamma Attack by Gamation. Alright, Gamma, Gamma Attack is your basic space shooter kind of side-scroller game. Uh, this was the only game that this company made. It got very, very limited release. Uh, it's believed that there are less than five copies of this game in existence. And it has been known to go for hundreds, if not thousands, on eBay. Personally, I like the game a lot. It reminds me a lot of Laser Blast, which is by far probably one of my all-time favorite Atari games. Oh, me too. Um, it's The only problem is it's just not as easy to maneuver around like in Laser Blast. Um, but, you know, yeah, like you said, it's not a bad game. I mean, um, you know, it, I don't think it's anything really special. I mean, unique. It's been done before, but, you know, hey, y you know, I mean, it was the only game they came out with, so... 
And next we have the two games by K Television, Vulture Attack and Spider Maze. These two games uh, got a very limited release in Europe and Canada, and they have the really cool cartridge with the handle that Humphrey likes. Jolly good. But they got very little distribution, if all, if any at all, in America. And here is Vulture Attack. As you can see, it's not a very original concept here. Typical space shooter. I think it's a very poor ripoff of Galaxian. Well, one thing I do like about it is they give you plenty of lives. I mean, you have six lives, you know, to start out. But anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, if you looked at the cartridges uh, for both of these games, you'll notice that there are actually uh, four different pictures on it. On them, excuse me, I think that they had bigger plans to make more games, um, but it just didn't end up working out that way, uh, mostly because of the video game crash of 83 and 84. All right, and next up we have Spider Maze. So is it just me, or does that gentleman you're playing look kind of familiar? Well, he should look familiar. He's a carbon copy of ColecoVision's version of uh, Mario. Oh, you got to point there. And why are those enemies so hard to see? That's a good point. I, I think that's part of the reason this game didn't do so well. Um, yeah. Uh, not the greatest game, for sure, definitely, and totally unoriginal. You know, definitely not a fan myself. Uh, me neither. Uh, Vulture Attack, Condor Attack, or whatever you want to call it. The game, although not very good, and like we said in the previous video, the games don't have to be very good in order to be valuable, usually goes for about 330 pounds, as you see in this auction that was previously on eBay. And Spider Maze, which was a very poor adaption, if you want to call it that, of Donkey Kong, goes for roughly about 299 euro, which is about $350 on eBay. And next up, we have Tooth Protectors, made by DSD Camelot for Johnson & Johnson. Okay, the object of Tooth Protectors is to guide TP... Uh... TP. <clears throat> the Tooth Protector is he protects the teeth during a snack attack. Valuable points are accumulated as TP deflects the cubes dropped by the snack attackers. Additionally, if you are successful in protecting the teeth from decay, valuable bonus points can also be earned. If TP misses a number of cubes, the teeth begin to blink, a sign of decay. Additional tooth protectors can be called by pressing the red action button. The toothbrush, dental floss, and fluoride dental rinse pass over the teeth in order, cleaning up the teeth by removing all the plaque. The game ends if three teeth disappear or if three TPs are carried away and eliminated by the snack protectors. When you are successful in protecting the teeth, valuable points will be accumulated and there will be no end to the fun you can have. Now, in order to get this game back in the day, you had to save up points from uh, Johnson & Johnson products. And this game uh, is quite valuable, actually more valuable than uh, Chase the, Ch uh, Chase the uh, Chuck Wagon. Uh, and I actually think this game is kind of quirky and fun. Uh, Chase the Chuck Wagon used to just frustrate the heck out of me because it was pretty much impossible uh, sometimes to get him through the maze. But I really actually enjoyed this game. And it's been known to go for a few hundred on eBay, and I've actually seen it go almost 500 one time uh, when they still had the instructions sheet, as there was uh, no um, box for the game. Alright, next up we have A Spile by Tigervision. If that company name sounds familiar, it should, because if you were growing up in the 80s and 90s, Tiger Vision was the company that used to make those little handheld uh, versions of arcade games. Alright, so, uh, Espial is your typical uh, space shooter game. The only problem here is that it's really hard to tell when you hit something, because it doesn't make much of a sound unless you hit one of those... Uh, base things there when you're, sh you know, so it can be kind of confusing, except for it makes it very obvious when they hit you. Um, this game, like many of the Taiga Vision games, got did not get very good distribution, with the exception of uh, 
Miner 2049er, of course, was a award-winning game that they were able to get the licensing for, but most of their other games did not get wide distribution. Um, this was one of those those games. Uh, this game has been known to go for uh, 50 to even sometimes up to $100 on eBay. Next up, also by Tiger Vision, we have Springer. Alright, in Springer, the object of the game is that you are the rabbit Springer and you are trying to get to the top. And you have to pick up things on the way, such as the fruits, if you wish, uh, and get them before they turn into evil dinosaurs. Uh, the controls in this game are abysmal, and it looks kind of cool when he dies with his neck all crooked like that. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so this game, again, is just totally abysmal. I hate the controls, uh, the graphics are subpar, and definitely not one of Tiger Vision's great moments. Well, if you think about it, though, uh, a lot of the people that played the handheld Tiger games really didn't care for them either. Uh, because they were just like a kind of a poor ripoff of, you know, the arcade games. Uh, well, that's what a lot of people thought. I personally did too. Um, and this games like this are the reason for the video game crash of 83 and 84. You had just tons and tons of really poorly made games that saturated the market. And, you know, people just basically stopped buying games because a lot of them were just ripoffs of more better and more established games and then you had you know ones like this that came out so in our last game boing by first star software okay boing has to be probably my favorite game of all these games on this list i find this game to be a whole lot of fun and very addictive uh, but again that's my opinion um so, uh, in this game, you bounce the bubble around a play field of 36 steps, six rows of six. The bubble must land on each step and turn it on, sometimes in a particular order. The bubble eater, or the pin, will pop the bubble if either comes in contact with it. The bubble eater chases the bubble while the pin descends the steps from the top row down. The pin will pop the bubble on the bubble eat or the bubble eater if they are in its path. So sometimes you can actually uh, trick the bubble eater into getting popped by the pin. Uh, yeah, it's not totally original and it reminds me a lot of Qbert, but I'll tell you what, it's very addictive. I've played this game one time for hours on end. It was just a whole lot of fun. So, um, out of all the games on this list, I have to honestly say this is my favorite and has the most replayability. However, the game itself is kind of rare, so um, if you're looking to add this game to your uh, 2600 collection in cartridge form, be ready to pay uh, anywhere from $50 to $100 for a cartridge. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And again, I want to take this moment to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and watching my videos. I really appreciate the number of views. They keep going up every time. The likes and the subscribers, I really, truly appreciate it. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for giving me a moment of your time you enjoy that you think I should review on this channel, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments section below and you may just see your game on this channel and I will be sure and give you credit for making that suggestion. Also, I want to thank our friends at AtariAge.com and AtariProtos.com where you can find out anything and everything Atari related. For my friend Humphrey the Wolf, this is Anthony Ventrello saying goodbye, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a blessed day.